I forgot to say something. There's a quote in my book by a very famous guru is i think it's the opening page or the amazon description where i asked one of my gurus what is tantra and he said go and fucking discover that for yourself or something like that he's like you have to experience it yourself do you know who said that no who said that it was you <laughs> oh really so hi and welcome everyone. Here is Matt speaking um, and I have a really special guest today, my dear friend, colleague, Shaft from uh, London. And we want to talk today about sexuality, about Tantra, about polarity, about masculinity, about edging, about everything that is related to ecstasy, orgasm, having fun and joy with sexuality. Hi, welcome Shaft. Um, let's introduce yourself. Thanks for having me, Matt. A pleasure. <clears throat> My name is Shaft Din. I'm a transformational rock star. I travel the world creating amazingly safe and sexy spaces for people to connect, cry, orgasm, or however they want to feel in the allocated time slots that I have at these high-level wellness events all around the world. It's a great life. I made it up myself. Mm. You're the creator. I also, uh, I also give you only my for a living. That's how I the mortgage. All right. Okay. So you're the creator of your own reality. So how did you came into this lifestyle, into this world, into this uh, tantric uh, dynamics in your life? Well, uh, vaginas, uh, through my mom's vagina, I came into this world, had, uh, I think, the most challenging birth for my mom. Um, I'm also the biggest handful for my mom. I mean, are the types of births that your moms give the amount of trouble you're going to cause in their lives? That's what I want to know. Um, outside of my mom's vagina, um, I've just been making stuff up. I'm an artist. I'm a visionary. I'm an Aquarian. It's my birthday yesterday. And I'm really good at making things up. It turns out the more you create, the more you make things up, the more people believe in your made up stories and creative ideas. I also have a two decade career in advertising. So I'm really, really good at manipulating billions of people to buy shit they don't need. <laughs> Luckily, by the grace of the gods, I got out of the matrix and then I found Tantra and got sober. And now I sell self-love, way better than selling fear. Mm -hmm. Okay. So curious about what you just said about you just making it all up. So what is it that you make up? So tell me what is the make up and what is the real shaft? What is what is true? Um, the truth is whatever you believe in. Whatever you believe in will come true. If you believe I hate my life, I hate my body, I hate myself, you're going to hate your life, hate your body and hate yourself. And you're going to find enough evidence to prove that. But if you lie enough to yourself and say, I love my life, I love my body, I love myself, and I love making 10 grand a day, you'll never know. If you lie yourself long enough, you might actually love your life, love your body, uh, love yourself, and make 10 grand a day. At this moment in my life, I'm making 10 grand every other month. So not there yet, but I'm not lying to myself hard enough. Mm. So what is the real you? Only you know. There will be idiots who will judge you They will share their perception. They'll come up to you and say, hey, I've got nothing better to do. I'm a piece of shit. I'm mentally ill. And I just want to tell you how you should live your life because it's different to mine. And I don't like that. So, yeah, that's, that, that happened as well. Mm. That's a projection for my own reality. Mm. So, um, do like I always tell everyone, do what the fuck you want to do with your life. If you tell me what you want to do, do you know what I'll say? Good for you. Crack on. I'm not going to say, but why? But why? But you narcissist, you egotistical maniac. Oh, God, you want to have money? You are the core of all sins. It's like, I just don't, I've got more things to worry about. Than... Yeah, so we are all kind of narcissistic, self-centered, uh, egomaniacs. Uh, specifically, no, when no, no. We, no, no, wait a we, second. We, wait, wait a second. We, we're going to talk about that. Self-love, self-love. It's as long we are kind of white male, well, you're not white, you're from India, as far as I know, but we are male, 
And we are literally in the power over structure, the ones who are literally dominating the world and making everything wrong. So we just have to be ashamed of being in a man's body and all that kind of bullshit. So question to you. you you're the problem, Matt. Do you know why? Because you're white, heterosexual and have a penis. I'm brown, identify myself as a lesbian, was a Muslim, became a unicorn uh, prophet. And now I'm a, like people need me to make their companies look good. For this the is, diversity thing. This is this it's, is so, I'm, I'm winning in life. <laughs> this is so crazy, you know, just like when I just went into this world of Tantra, you know, kind of the polarity identification about gender and motherfuckers. Uh, I hate I just, that polarity world. I completely left that, I don't know, in 2015, and I went down that path and just choose to be just myself, a multisexual being, not being identified with kind of um, mm. masculinity and you know and then it's like people putting me in that box what can I do shit I look white I'm, <laughs> I'm male I look male just like just, I'm I'm the one who the entire world can now project the entire hate of uh, patriarchy yes. and the the negative masculinity is just like yeah just bring it on project it all on me question to you we met in 2016 or something in uh tantra festival in yeah. engsbacker this i saw you just coming in with the long unicorn unicorn thing. thing and um but what is what's your passion in in this tantric world what what keeps you going what gets you out of bed what gets you hard what turns you on what's your um main passion in this world in this life around sexuality tantra and whatever you do it's uh, the impact race. That's my biggest passion now. So I've had three awakenings, one from the rat race, one from the woke enlightenment race. Um, terrible, that one. Uh, and also I want, I want to hear now, more about that one. And now I'm in the uh, impact race. And they, they all come from breakdowns and breakthroughs and rock bottoms, losing your health, wealth and everything, mental sanity, don't know who you are anymore. <clears throat> and it's real and it's messy and it's horrible. And now I'm in the wealth generation game. Like I've done the rat race. I know how fucked up that is. So I went into Tantra and got sober and it's been 10 years. This, this year I'll be sober. And I've had more deeper, healthier, wealthier uh, connections and lifestyle than I could ever dream of. But I also know it's full of dicks and idiots like and twats. Like I really don't want to be part of that world because it's really, really unstable and full of mentally ill people who are now running a lot of the, the, the major uh, things in the world. So you have a huge wokeism world out there. And I just try to avoid those people like the fucking plague or the COVID or whatever type of uh, new virus that we label those people with, but I'm labeling them. They're into polarity. They're into all these things that are so toxic and will fuck you up and separate people for the rest of their lives in their little self-love bubble of, I need to wound cleanse. I'm gonna stay away from the other sex just to heal myself. And then they get programmed by saying, you're going to have to heal yourself for the rest of your life. Not only this life, but your past lives and now your ancestors' lives. You're fucked. Catch you later. Here, buy my online course. Now I'm out of that. So I'm now uh, just well away from that world and just working on entrepreneurship and having impact on the planet to actually get more people shouting i love my life i love my body i love myself and i love making 10 grand a day so everyone's healthier happier uh wealthier and in deeper committed relationships than ever before so that's my my passion right now also tv and entertainment that's my thing yeah i think you're good on stage i've seen a few things of you uh, on stage in front of people so i i guess that's the direction you're just uh, uh heading right i bloody love it mate yeah so um i just want to just like put a, a few themes on the table one of them uh, you just actually touched it about the uh, woke mentality and the woke uh, uh, uh identification about uh, inclusivity all is just one big kind of a pile of uh, a, a blur of i don't know um so what was your wake up out of the uh this dynamic so so how did you broke free from woke? How did you woke free? 
I woke free from the Enlightenment race. During COVID, um, I was a big part of the goddess empowerment industry. I have an incredible documentary out around <clears throat> uh, yoni massages. It's one of the top uh, 10 videos, um, the highest viewed videos for uh, Vice on YouTube. Um, and I'm very passionate about female empowerment. Like I'm very passionate about helping women with sexual trauma. Like that is literally how I paid paid my mortgage for the last 10 years, decade now. <clears throat> Doing the same thing over and over again, which is the only de-armoring, the only mapping. And that's my that's my business. That's my I don't really talk about that because that just runs itself. But out like all good things. You make it mainstream and then you get a few interesting people on board and then they'll just twist it and subvert it into something just not that healthy anymore. Like all good religions, it started off really well and it was all shaped for you to fall in love deeply with yourself and practice the law of attraction and go whatever you want. It was all quite simple until everybody fucked it up. So... I left in 2019 when I left Koh Phangan. I went to Sweden during COVID, uh, going back into a city, starting to wear shoes and trousers and clothes again. I'm back from Koh Phangan. I'm like, you know, pretty much, pretty much naked all the time. And I broke free when I left the community. And I broke free when I did a sex magic ritual with a very powerful woman. And she introduced me to the next level. And then the next day I met Sorel Amore from YouTube fame uh, at one of my talks. And then the ball started rolling around the impact race and all these other people popping up into my life, like Vishen Lakiani, Regan Hillier, um, having multi orgasmic experiences with Emily Fletcher, like all these crazy things have been happening uh, since 2022, mainly the last two years, where I fully detached myself from the enlightenment race and seeing how unhealthy it is to even date somebody who identifies themselves as a goddess, a priestess, or sacred sexual. Like, it's just a fucking mess if you go into the world of. Um, mm -hmm. the goddess empowerment industry and tantra it's like a lot of victims helping victims and it's just better to dip in get the healing get the only massages uh activate your sexual energy and then get the fuck out of there without getting sucked in to the uh celibate twin flame womb cleanse world that is the healing cycle you'll never get out of it it never mm -hmm. ends that's another form of brainwashing everybody so um Another theme I just want to have a look at and that goes as well into this kind of woke question. Um, I mean, we are both male, right? We have a dick. Let's say we have a dick. We're born with a dick. We have balls. Better. Good. Good. I'm not identified as a male either. I'm more like projected as an uh, identified male, you know, just like everybody obviously thinks that because I'm looking that way. But uh, so sometimes I identify as a potato. Yeah, right. And just totally go for it. So so what I'm what I'm observing at the moment here, so I'm in Stockholm. I've been spending kind of uh, two months of winter, what is actually a really uh, crash landing, but it's it's needed. But what I see is kind of men in my age, men who are white, men who are out there, they are lost and lonely. And I've seen so many who have kind of um, given up on either dating, they're giving up on um, getting out there, having an impact on influence. And, you know, I remember that from this goddess industry, you have been talking about the the kind of the, the uh, uh, of, of goddess feminine kind of... Um, um, military tribe, <laughs> nearly. Uh, so where all these women said, just like, yeah, uh, I just only want to work with women. I don't want to work with men, and I don't want to work with this kind of man. Yeah. But the question is, I mean, this is this typical kind of uh, women who just like transforming or transitioning from the goddess movement into the uh, kind of um, porn addiction. Um, chem girl only fan industry, 
right? They're just jumping in and just like sucking off all this kind of guys who nobody wants to be with, who's spending big money online internet in in uh, uh, in live camming. And you know all these guys who are lost in there in this visual uh, world in the in the internet kind of bubble of um, uh, unintimate connection, erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, um, uh, porn addiction, addictions to, to ejaculation. This is the big theme for men, right? And you have been working with that as well a little bit. So what's your experience there, and how do you help men? First of all, anyone watching, please check out The Shaft Show on OnlyFans where you'll find my deeper content around sacred sexuality and learn about uh, tantra massage and breast massage and ass massage. Just saying. Uh, yes, this uh, in this day and age, you have a vagina, you could buy an island. Uh, how do I know that? I know a lot of women who have. Yes, but this is the world we live in now. We live in a world where the option to be a man is so bad that we have an epidemic of trans people out there now. Men converting to become women because the option of being a woman is just better. Yeah, the option of being that, a man is just like, you know, you're, 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 it's the you're worst just a thing loser. to be. It's the worst yeah. thing to be. It's like, I mean, let's, let's let's make it clear. It's a white heterosexual man. <laughs> let's make that clear. It's it's, re it's really bad. It, it it's fucked up. It's even worse in America, the United States. That is a fucking state. Um, it's terrible over there. The polarity concept is is terrible. No wonder no man could get it up. It's because they're petrified of getting a hard penis because they'll get accused of some kind of buggery or some kind of sodomy or some kind of perversion that has some kind of desire towards women. Now, we live in a fucked up day and age where everything is manipulated by these devices. If you turn these devices off, and we were joking about this on Zen Beach yesterday, if you turn these devices off, look where we are we've got kids running around we've got dogs playing we're in nature and no one's talking about polarity or the lack of connection or anything like that it just exists inside these phones but guess what else exists inside these phones money wealth generation our jobs are inside these phones now human connection because we don't have time to go out the house because we're so uh, present with these machines that the only time we have to connect is a quick uh, connection to Pornhub, have a quick whack off. And then if you want to invest the money into your favorite porn star, then you could actually talk to her robot who will then send automated pictures of her, which are strategically created to manipulate men to keep on uh, paying pay PPVs so they could finally ejaculate and have that rush. Um, how do I know that? Because the women are teaching me how to make money via their OnlyFans. Like I met a couple of OnlyFans uh, chicks, uh, super funny, hilarious, wealthy as fuck. On a bad month, they make £8,000 mm -hmm. on a bad month when they're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. So how's your uh, OnlyFans going? Um, did you manage to educate some couples, men? Anyone? Yeah, uh, yeah, I have a 50-50 uh, amount of people. I have a steady stream of income coming in from that. Um, I, I don't do anything I don't want to do, and I do everything that I do want to do. So a lot of naked podcasts, talking about mummy-daddy issues, meeting really beautiful hot women all around the world who want to have a massage with Shaft and then I do very educational content about you know how to create a safe container, how to give yoni massages with left hand whilst holding the camera. Well, POV actually, style. Who knows that one, right? You use those fingers? I use this one. I use this one. Yeah, I use you use that. A... Oh no way. Huh, interesting. I always use this one. So um so yeah, uh it's 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 the world we live in. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is this is another important piece, right? 
throat and anus or throat and and yoni kind of the the, the, really? the, 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 the neurological uh, uh, neurological connection the short circuit to reset the nervous system put them both both in the same time and let the gag and the expansion in the in the pelvic happening just like it just blows the entire thing into you need to tell me reset. more about this yeah this you I, I i thought you know that man you're, dude you're... i've been teaching i've been teaching the shaft method for 10 years i just do my thing over and over again what else is outside of my own like matrix i've created for myself just maybe your shaft method needs an upgrade this is literally what we do in the dearmoring training so it's just like everybody tell me more everybody knows that <laughs> kind of just building that up <laughs> It's just like people just like blowing wide open and they have a spiritual experience and all this fear and contraction in the nervous system, this holding pattern in the in the butthole and just like, oh, hell, I can't speak. It's everything's just like blop open. It's like, okay, it's just really good being a human. Just want to say some, oh some it's, it's really, it's really good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want come, to experience that. Come shove, get the mad method, uh, uh, method and then... <laughs> transform it into the shaft method so um i had a i had an interesting call yesterday um, um with uh you know and i've, I've my um, monthly monday meetings or uh, i have a kind of a group of people coming together in relationship to consent and uh sensual uh, inflow and all this kind of pleasure uh, stuff um everybody more than welcome to join every first monday per month but um, what I want to say, there was a woman yesterday saying, um, and I say a woman, she's identified as a woman, and and I love that uh, that she's making that stand. And she was saying something, we were talking the same thing, what you just said about uh, online thing, everything, everybody is just like lost in this kind of technical stuff here and polarity and all the woke kind of bullshit and all that stuff. Um, and she said kind of a quote from mind to body and from body to nature, you know, kind of like a like an idea. And it's a said, like, well, this is just like a mantra that's so easy to say. And I hope people who hear that who can literally follow up with that, just look from mind to body, body to nature. But what I have seen and, uh, you know, I'm just like keeping my eyes and ears open as well. Have you have you seen this release of this? Um, Apple Vision Pro, this kind of thing where people just like wearing their goggles and everything is just happening online and people go, the wealthy, the rich people, this is where this, the, the, the billion dollar um, uh, individual companies kind of growing because everybody's being sucked into this medium of internet more and more and more. So the, the mantra is, of course, from mind to body to nature is exactly the opposite. So it's more like away from away, nature. What is that? The body? Well, just like, let's get some drugs that I don't have to feel what's going on there and go straight from there into your mind and from mind kind of just like downloading this entire superficial construct into this reality here. So what do you think about that? <clears throat> We're going to make a lot of money, man. We're going to make a lot of money. Do you know why? Because people are getting more and more disconnected than ever before. And the more we keep on showing people that human connection and natural human interaction is the way forward, then eventually, you know, everything runs in patterns and cycles. People will want to come back to being a human again. And the more, again, I, I spent four months in the United States of America, and it is, it's a mess over there. They are ruining their bodies by the government that loves them, feeding them shit that isn't even real anymore. Did you know that in America you could get candy floss grapes? Grapes that actually taste like candy floss. You could actually have watermelons, for your convenience, they take out the seeds so you can never grow your own watermelons. It's just worse and worse. And yeah, that's that's what they're doing. They're slowly taking away the need for you to leave your house. And I, I've already predicted the future. Climate change is happening. 
oh no, did you know that you could generate your own electricity if you just plug yourself into a machine? Now you could generate your own electricity. Now you're saving the climate. Stay at home, take, keep locked in. We'll provide you with all the entertainment you need. Now we created these special cubicles for you. It's called uh, the Matrix. All right, and then just like what's off what's your the, pop? What's the suit that we can wear when we have the goggles on that we have the full illusion like we are in a real world? So let's let's talk about the opposite. I mean, this will happen anyway. You know, this this generation. Yeah, it's gonna happen anyway. This generation alpha. You know, everybody born after 2010 who just uh, have observed their parents kind of watching on a screen instead of their yeah. eyes, where the where the mm -hmm. touch screen contact is higher than actually the skin contact and eye gazing. So yeah. it's like, well, this is intimidating. I just rather look on my screen. So these yeah. kids, you know, this is the generation. You know, when they are in a position of making uh, kind of decisions somehow, somewhere, we are hopefully dead. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I want to still be alive. I'm not going to be dead. I'm going to be living somewhere very happy with my harem and all of my empire, uh, somewhere isolated away from the Matrix in a massive island. <laughs> How how Probably about that, but, how, yeah. how about you are being part of somebody else's harem and choosing you and picking you to have a good time? Yeah, I, great. I, that could be on the other island. Yeah, right. So you have one island with your own harem, and then on the exactly, other island yeah. you are part of somebody. I'll be harem. part of someone else's. I'm I'm very flexible. I'm monogamous and polyamorous, but not at the same time. Right. <laughs> and then you can actually literally exchange different islands and being part on different harems, right? And if you had enough exactly the ones harem, you come back and then have your own one. Yeah, the ones owned by the only fan shaktis, yeah. <laughs> right. Vagina um, island. Vagina island. So um let's talk about something that you probably as well have mastery that's edging so the entire tantric idea is um you know everybody knows so far that the average of sexual intercourse is about uh six and a half minutes and I oh, it's gone it's, up well, i don't oh. know it's very long i think that was when i started or 10 years ago maybe it's five or maybe three or i, I don't know it's, yeah. it's three and a half minutes um, three and i and heard half. recently yeah i heard recently five but, you know, one hopes that we've advanced a bit for in the last 10 years else we haven't really been doing our job. Yeah. So, so I mean, the main thing is when I went, you know, into my kind of educational part, you know, went through the Mandak Chia school. So you just learn to mm, squeeze, same. kind of roll your eyes back and then kind of uh, try to... Uh, do this um, Muller Banda squeezing your pelvic floor and get maintain erection, get erection and control your ejaculation completely bullshit. Um, so the idea of etching is literally having a relaxed body, having a relaxed nervous system and having an orgasmic expansion from a relaxed space of arousal. So what's your experience of this? I don't know, edging is such a negative word because it just has been kind of um, put into the box and category of pornography and uh, porn, porn addiction. Um, but there's a healthy way of edging. There's a healthy way of um, uh, what I call more an orgasmic surfing in the grid, you know, mm. and there are probably different descriptions about that. But what's your experience? And maybe enrich us with your um, uh, wisdom beautiful question my zone of genius yeah. so i invented the term injaculation remember i worked in advertising uh that has reached 50 million people now and i'm a big fan of non-ejaculation and separating the ejaculation and orgasm last year i um didn't ejaculate for one whole year uh, just to see what would happen and from that one whole year, I generated 133,000 English pounds. So is there a correlation? Is there not? Ask Napoleon Hill. 
in his book, Think and Grow Rich, I believe it's chapter 13 or 11, I can't remember, called Sexual Transmutation, which is all about harnessing your sexual energy for wealth, prosperity, and directing that sexual energy for purpose. So that's kind of what I did for that one year. That's, that was, it was a great year. I didn't really work that much. I just made a shit ton of money. Mm -hmm. And it, like the what I was working on, because I only have my life as an indicator of success. Like I don't care what other people are doing or seeing, or you know, I don't really compete with anyone else apart from myself. But every time you get to a certain level, you do get to a certain level. And it's literally like a simulation in a computer game where if I break the hundred K threshold or the 10k threshold on Instagram and the 50k threshold on YouTube followers or the 100 or a million views on YouTube, you do break through to another level and more people have eyes on you and more people can help you and more people are inspired by you. So it's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So I did notice when I went deeper into non-ejaculation that uh, I did become wealthier and also when I was doing my tantric practices, the shaft method, uh, which is uh, my, my form of sumo retention, which I call edging your way to enlightenment, is a self eight minute self-love practice that can eradicate erectile dysfunction and premature ejaculation for all men uh, within one month. But if you maintain it for years, then you're just gonna get healthier, happier, and you will attract the women or women of your dreams. I talk about harems because you know, people are just struggling to find one woman. But if you've perfected the art of uh, having healthy, happy relationships, what happens if you have two healthy, happy relationships? Are you going to be happier? Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. You're just going to be smart enough and we're humans to scale love and utilize it for mass impact so you could all collaborate together. Because if you're a fucking rock star uh, governing and maintaining an, an empire that uh, has global impact and you attract someone else like that doing something you know on the other spectrum then you join forces then you're going to have more impact on the planet and there's more like there's 8.2 billion people you, why why wait for one person when you could just be happy with seven and semen retention helps with that because it helps you be present and you could you know they actually trained in the like Islam, for example, if you're going to have a harem, they train you in their religious uh, mystical texts, the, the Sufi texts, to pleasure your wives. 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 Yeah, so, so don't judge me. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, by doing tantra and preserving my heritage, everybody. Yeah. So, so tell these guys a little bit more, you know, just what my experiences in the past when i started that i don't know it's just almost 25 years ago i'm i'm a tantric dinosaur um this is a, it's a quarter of a century when i started so you can just actually uh, uh calculate how old i must be then anyway so when i started the problems that i had because you know i was in i was in ejaculation and orgasm addiction uh, uh, addict when i was 11 you know i had you know, uh, I, I found it by coincidence, kind of touching myself, and I had an orgasm. And from that day on, I was it, it, not ejaculating because I started ejaculating when I was 15, but I was orgasm several times a day because it was so fucking wow. addictive. It was so, so great. You know, and then when I was 15, ejaculation came on, on top of that. And I was just like, yeah, now I'm, I'm, a, now I'm a man. And then, you know, just like once or twice a day ejaculation. And I guess that this is what most young men do. I imagine so, because it was just my experience. And then kind of, it went into my end 30 uh, and twenties where I had my tantric awakening kind of a completely utterly crash, you know, my understanding of being a multi orgasmic man, this, uh, years back was I can have as many orgasm and as many ejaculation as I want to right and I was just proving that myself was falling in love with a woman locking myself off uh, with her for a week seven days and I had 25 ejaculations and I completely crashed my entire system collapsed I was really suicidal and you know I was, 
it was really, really bad, you know. And of course, I didn't jump, so I'm still here. But my th that was my awakening, and that was the first, the first direction I went was, and that was just about when Mandak Chia stuff came out in in ninety seven, ninety six, or something like that. So just, oh, this is doing my thing here, but. So I just read that book and then I started with semen retention and all that kind of stuff. And I had so much problems probably for five years with blue balls because I was doing this Mantec Shia thing was contracting my pelvic and controlling all that. So what's the shaft method? What is what is that people will get when they're going into your method? And, you know, I have my own method, you know, this kind of is just a part of it. Um, so I just learned the de-armoring way and getting... <laughs> <laughs> getting the tension out of the body and um you know my method is just like i can be multi-orgasmic for for as long as i like without ejaculating without injaculating it's just i'm going on you know i'm using my sexual energy and my the power of my cock rising up in this area uh, uh, area and then i can just like dwell there as much as i like but what's the shaft method so how how do people what do they get they get peace. Well, first of all, thank you for sharing. Fascinating story. I had a little confusion on my face because you were orgasming before you could ejaculate. Oh, yeah. Okay. No wonder you're so young looking. So you were for four years orgasming nonstop over and over again. Yeah. And then biologically, your semen got reduced and then you started to ejaculate. Yeah. That's crazy. I've never heard that story. Oh, good. I, That's very I, unique. Okay. I didn't know. Very good to know. It is definitely unique. I, 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 because I work with women and women have been uh, masturbating since they were three years old. Yeah. The majority of them. Uh, dudes, I mean, I started masturbating when I was 24. Pretty, pretty old, old dog when I started. Um, so, <clears throat> When it comes to self-pleasure, it was, I just waited until I had sex and I would notice before I was spiritual or anything, every full moon I'd have sex. This was when I was an alcoholic and a drug addict. I'm not a tantric person uh, connecting to the great universe or the moon at this time. It's just something I noticed. And um, when it came to understanding self-love, there isn't really a physical practice that you can do for self-love. Now, I hated myself. I was an alcoholic, drug addict, uh, self-identified as a, a, a narcissist, and um, I, I didn't have a heart. I uh, had a black rock and core of a heart. I couldn't feel emotions at all. The only time I would cry was during rom-coms or Disney films or sad songs or breakups. And there's a lot of breakups. So I didn't know about self-love. I just knew that I was depressed and sad and like suffering in life and everybody hated me. But when I got sober, I really did need to discover what it was to actually feel in my body what love was without the addiction for eros and uh, romantic highs and relationships because that's the only kind of love I felt. It's only in Engsbacher uh, where I discovered unconditional love when I was uh, working with loads of beautiful uh, people. And I looked into someone's face and my heart melted. And I was like, oh, unconditional love. And to this day, the foundation of uh, my trainings and self-pleasure practices is around unconditional love it's like the love that you feel for your dog or your cat or when you see something amazing in nature it's like the overwhelming feeling of love it's it, you'll never really feel that unless you um you know have a reference point. i never felt it until i was like 36 so that, you know, that's an old age of not feeling that now I train everyone to feel that while self-pleasuring, while practicing conscious touch on their own body. So the first week of the shaft method is feeling your body for the first time without an erotic touch, just touching yourself 
So you're releasing oxytocin. So you're feeling more connected without having to connect with other people, but connecting to yourself. And then through conscious touch, which is the foundation, start to activate your own lingam with like, you know, the rainbow rub, the fire starter, the namaste, the infinity rub, all these different types of strokes that you can do yourself or train your partner to do for you because then you can actually have a communication around the number scaling system so you know where you are on the scaling of edging, so to speak, or, you know, ejaculation 10, nine is the point of no return, eight is playing with fire, the growth period is five, six, seven, and 7.2, 7.5, and 8.1. Uh, that's where you will feel the uh, separation of ejaculation and orgasm. Mm. And then in the third week of my training, you'll discover how to make love tantrically, because it's a whole different ball game when there's another human being who has uh, boobs and a vagina, and also trying to please her, and also uh, not telling her out of shame that you're doing uh, uh, semen retention, and then she wants to suck your semen out of you because that that's what makes her feel happy and you know validated. So you've got to do a whole way of making love tantrically, creating rituals, safe spaces. Uh, boundaries and consent, uh, the rules of engagement, circulating the energy. I created a different sacred sexual orbit, so to speak. And um, you revert, it's a reverse flow of energy, the opposite that everyone's teaching. And then um, doing a little closing ritual and sharing as well. And then the final week of my program is the, uh, the end um, meditation, which is an eight minute practice that you do every day for the rest of your life and you keep on raising your sexual energy. Uh, you release the blue balls through Uli Alabandas and um, sublimating the energy. It's not just stuck in your uh, genital area, but it's sublimated up into your whole body, making you younger, stronger, and sexier than ever before. I mean, I'm, I'm 44. Mm. And uh, and it works. And you're, you've been you know practicing since you were 11. No wonder you're like 50 odd or something. Well, actually, I'm 65, but I'm not telling you. No, <laughs> no, this, that was perfectly coming here. I think the <laughs> cam is back. So um, <laughs> as, as you share, and th thank you for sharing that. And I, I guess people find you on your web page. What's actually the name of your web page? Shaft.com? Uh, tan Tantrawithshaft.com is my my online uh, train it uh, for my online courses that you could just dive into or the one-to-one -one coaching is sacredsexualawakening.com if you want to know more about yoni massages and go deeper into coming to Thailand and having a mentor and someone guide you and take you around here and need someone to initiate you into your tantric path that's a six-month journey that you can join with me and it's been a, a beautiful decade of helping and healing people get more awesome. Mm, nice. So, um, as I mentioned that when I just like had my 25 ejaculations in a week and, um, and didn't jump from a balcony, uh, my awakening was just like, because you said that as well about unconditional love. So my awakening was just like, what is Tantra and what is unconditional love or what is love? And uh, on Tantra, I've kind of given up. I cannot say what Tantra is still not after 25 years. And I guess that's the closest, Uppsala, this is the closest description to it. So unconditional love is probably mm -hmm. the way. But what I'm interested uh, as well, and many, many people, many men, hopefully as well, is, you know, you said you were an alcoholic. You were taking drugs. You were kind mm -hmm. of... Um, um, taking substances um, and you know there are so many addictions and uh, what's your what's your go-to thing to tell people when they're having an addiction for example pornography ejaculation or orgasm addiction or kind of you know um, drugs alcohol coffee um, um, cigarettes things, whatever yeah whatever so so what's what's the shaft method to get out of the addiction loop um, I tried everything, AA, NA, I went to doctors and everything, and um, they couldn't help me. So I did some self-inquiry, and uh, I developed my own method. And that, again, it's all made up. 
but give it a go. Ask yourself why. Like I knew that I, you know, when I had my awakening, I had to get off the, the cigarettes, the drink, and then eventually the drugs. I did one year at a time. If I did, if I went cold turkey straight away, I, I would never have done it. Um, I was a severe alcoholic and a drug addict, by the way. So when I was 26, I had a, I was almost on a kidney dialysis. Uh, when I was 33 or 34, I had a few months uh, left to live uh, because I had liver damage. And I, you know, I was a mess. Um, but it's called being British. And every time you meet someone, you're going to get a shit face. Like, you know, it's just part of the culture. You don't know how addicted you are to anything because it's, it's a driving force to keep you on the treadmill in the office to keep you going, uh, the matrix. So when I fell off that and found Tantra and then found the Enlightenment race, um, I decided to get off the cigarettes first, then uh, the drink and then the drugs. And the first thing I said to myself was, why? Why am I smoking? And my brain said, because I want to get fucked up. And I asked myself, why do you want to get fucked up? Uh, and then the answer was, because I'm not happy. I hate my life. What do you need to do? You need to learn to love your life. That's a whole other story. Then the next year uh, was the alcohol. Why are you drinking? Because uh, I want to kiss hot women. Why do you want to kiss hot women? So I could be in a relationship with them because I love love. Um, what do you need to do in order for you to um, not drink and be in a relationship with women? Uh, learn to love myself. But, and, and that path was uh, Tantra, being in conscious, sober spaces like Tantra festivals where I met you, uh, where everyone's actually connecting sober, consciously, deeper, more intimacy is what I was longing for. I just was choosing to get shit faced instead. And the side effect was, you know, walking around the streets of London where there's 8 million people and I just want to connect with like one because I've got a nogginess back then. Uh, but then you find Tantra, then you can connect with as many people as you want, sober, uh, without any words or approaching anyone. It's amazing because the teachers facilitate that for you. So, I mean, so I got off the alcohol pretty rapidly. One year and eight months of Tantra, Tantric experiences, uh, doing, uh, giving yoni massages, having lingam awakenings, anal dearmorings, like body awakenings, like doing did, did the classic Tantric awakening path stuff. One year and eight months, my brain said, you're no longer an addict. And then I stopped taking drugs. The drugs were the hardest. Uh, was it the drugs? Yeah, the drugs were the hardest. Yeah, because... Um, I asked myself, why are you taking drugs? Uh, and the brain said, it feels like I'm I, I'm in the womb. That's what it feels like, I'm in the womb. And, uh, and I took heroin, crystal meth, um, I did it, I did it all. And I loved it, I had a great time. Um, again, you know, great stories, but I almost died a lot of times as well. And, um, and in the end, uh, I asked my brain, how are you gonna get back into the womb? Uh, and the answer was Tantra. So getting into the womb state, AKA the oneness feeling is through tantric sexual experiences, tantric uh, rituals where we pray to Lakshmi or Shiva or whoever we're working with to reach higher states of consciousness, to reach God, that's the goal, uh, to reach enlightenment through uh, guided experiences in a group where we have these pujas and these beautiful, um, you know, five, six hour rituals where we eventually meet God. Mm. And it's nice. I had a really beautiful experience. It was a great seven years of my life. And then, it, you know, I, eventually I got off everything and I was a purist for a really long time and, um, you know, vegan and all that stuff. But after a while you go, oh, what's it like to be human again? Then you go back into the city and then you realize you're brainwashed. And then that was me leaving the goddess empowerment industry in 2019. Yeah. I mean, this is it's so interesting. I have a similar story like that, you know. And so when I when I look into my own life and getting over addictions and all that, um, 
so man first of all just like what is this idea of edging and what is happening here it's just like divine unity it's just like going into that mm. realm of oneness is this realm of merging into this um kind of unified field of consciousness right and and, mm -hmm. and you know and everybody who had a glimpse and i guess you have had many of of this so it's like yeah why would i compromise that for anything else so when you get this divine kiss once it's just like yeah i just giving up everything it's just like what else can i or i have to give up to get higher in that state just like mm. drugs alcohol cigarettes nicotine you know everything i just give up everything if i can be there you know that's the best mm. addiction to have because it's the mother of yes. all addiction is the it's kind of dwelling into that place you know and from the polarity kind of all energies are happening in there just like this most orgasmic experience in the body is you vibrate and 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 radiate into this place and you're just total present at the same time mm. total consciousness in, in in alignment with 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 the physical form um absolutely beautiful and makes absolutely sense for everybody giving up an addiction because this is the best you can actually do and yeah. you know tantra um, you know, Tantra is the new yoga and for many people mm. it's still a little bit woo woo and what's going on there. And just like, you know, people start to wake up to that. There must be something else without creating a kind of a cult or a mm. religion or anything. Just like the invitation is for everybody to go on this inside journey into this awakening. And if you want to call it Tantra, do it, but just do it from an internal space. Mm. Last piece you said you are on the influencer addiction so you just woke up from the goddess syndrome and from the from from the matrix rat race and uh, as an influencer so where do you see yourself and you said it already you have an island with with a harem but where do you see yourself evolving where are you what's the path of shaft in life and where are you going so they call me the Tony Robbins of Tantra, Yoni Robbins. Um, if you go on my YouTube channel, I've got the Shaft Show. I want to create a reality TV show where everyone gets these uh, tantric tools to overcome addiction, to overcome weight loss, to overcome self-hatred, self-loathing, uh, to come out of self-doubt. Like, I got the tools. Like, the tools work. I, I'm one of the few people who was rich enough and had a lot of time to invest into traveling for like, you know, still to this day, a decade, invested a hundred thousand pounds on tantric experiences, uh, going to Tony Robbins, going to Mind Valley, hanging around with Vishen Lakhiani, like being around people like all the top wellness celebrities on the planet now and realizing it's all the same. It's all the same. It's all Tantra. It's literally the same old Tantric. Uh, I call it the original biohacking. It's all the same stuff, utilizing the body to reach high states of consciousness. So I'm going to create a reality TV show called The Shaft Show, where the star of the show is you, where if I could help one person change your inner monologue from I hate myself to I love myself, then I get to change one person's life. And if I could scale that, to millions and billions of people, I could have healthier, happier humans not wanting to kill themselves and be more connected and have more healthier, like, babies. And get fucking rich at the same time. Rich, that's just inevitable. It always happens. What are you Fashion doing with no all this truckloads of money? So what's the, in, uh, the input that you want to do to the world if you get the billionaire? Check. I'm doing the input to humanity now. Like this is this is it. Nothing's going to change. Like that money is it's just a side effect of helping as many people as possible. So I'm playing another part of a simulation, which is how to make your money make money. And last night I did a, a very powerful uh, psychedelic uh assisted therapy where could i turn 34 yesterday i'm um, sorry 34 44 yesterday and i um i i wanted to know uh what what am i going to do with the next few years of my life and it said uh my mantra that i got was i am a great investor 
So I'll, I'll be investing in people. Uh, like I give away money on my YouTube and Instagram channels. Um, they say money can't buy you happiness. It fucking can. It really can. Like I love the house that I live in. I mean, I've got a great view. I'm rich as fuck. Don't have to do a lot. But I only work because I want to work. Like I don't, I don't have to work for the rest of my life. It's amazing. But if I want children, let's say free, then I definitely need to work. <laughs> and if I want two uh, beautiful women in my life who are going to carry these babies, I'm going to take care of them. So, you know, that's more humans than just me. So I definitely got to make more money than just taking care of Shaft, who could live in luxury places by himself, easy. But <laughs> I'm learning how to invest, making that money, make money. And then, yeah, just trying to figure it out. Because the way I figured out how to give any woman an orgasm, which is a big thing, because that's the most complicated thing on the planet, I'm going to figure out how to get rich. So I could just tell everyone for free on my YouTube channel. But that's what I do. Nice, I like that. All right, let's come to a completion for today. It was really nice having you and uh, having Thank this you. little... Oops. Uh, this is a breakdown. Let's say that again. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here and, and uh, joining. And... Um, so people can find you on your webpage and uh, they travel where you are and they just connecting with you um, on social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Yeah, Instagram mainly, uh, shafted in, YouTube, shafted in. Check out my book um, on tantroshaft.com and all seven courses. And if you want to learn how to give anyone an orgasm, my latest course, uh, Yo the Yoni Mapping course, Discover Pleasure Pathways, is the new erotic blueprint where anyone could. It's so it's so easy to give women orgasms. You just listen to them. I've got a whole method. It's it's done for you. There's a script and everything. Mm, all right. Okay. We connect somehow somewhere in the world. See you around, and if not, I see you online. And um... oh, I want. I forgot. I forgot to say something. There's a quote in my book by a very famous guru. It's, I think it's the opening page or the Amazon description where I asked one of my gurus, what is Tantra? And he said, go and fucking discover that for yourself or something like that. He's like, you have to experience it yourself. Do you know who said that? No, who said that? It was you. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, I quoted <laughs> you at the beginning of my book. That's so cool. And it's so cool. That's how old you are. <laughs> that's so funny. You're the OGs of Tantra. Yeah. I just like uh, trying to find the audience um, uh, to, you know, I'm in the middle of the matrix and I actually love it. And I'm an, I'm an, I'm, a, I'm a hidden agent, you know, just like I just mm -hmm. actually I'm not a hidden agent. I'm just like more. I have to make sure that the agent doesn't catch me while I'm hanging around here in the matrix. I probably have to disappear one day and just like come to Copenhagen or to back to Bali and just like uh, leaving the red race here. Um, but, you know, if the rent is in Copenhagen as high as in Stockholm, then it is. Yeah, it is. All right. <laughs> Let's say. Bye for now on this point here and uh, see you in the world.